Hi guys, it's Alyssa. I am here with another reading for you today. I hope you've all been doing well and you're taking care of yourselves. So I have three cards here from the Vintage Wisdom Oracle deck. And what we're going to be asking today is, what does your person want to have happen between you? Basically, what do they want for your connection? Where do they want it to go next? So um, we have three cards here to choose from, one, two, and three. Card number one is centering, number two, reflection, and card number three is faith. So um, the timestamps for each group will be in the comment section as usual, so you can head down there and skip ahead if you want to. Um, also, I am running a sale on personal readings this week. Everything is 20% off. So if you are watching this video between June 1st and June 7th of 2020, and you're interested in getting a private reading from me, you can go to the description below and find my links. You can order through my website or my Etsy store. Either works fine. And um, all of my other links will be down there as well. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Serpentine Daughter. So we are... Um, going to jump right into this with group number one. So if you haven't decided yet, go ahead and pause the video. All right. All right. So group one, I am going to be using for you guys the golden tarot. So let's find out what your person of interest wants to have happen between you. What do they want for your connection? Where do they want for it to go? Let's get a few cards here. <clears throat> What does group one's person want to have happen? Okay, we have the nine of swords reversed. We have the four of coins. Four of cups. Whoa. I'm going to take this justice card because that was, um, <laughs> that one was facing up. These cards, this deck is like really, um, really slippery. <laughs> like the cards have this real glossy finish. And so they, um, they have a tendency to escape from me sometimes when I'm shuffling. We've got four of swords coming out here as well. Let's get a couple more. The emperor reversed. And we have the Queen of Swords. Um, okay. So, group one, give me a second here to look over these cards. <clears throat> okay, so group number one, um, the first thing that is coming to me is something about creating some level of stability. Um, I mean, your oracle card is centering. So the centering card, it, it does have this energy of, you know, grounding and um, realignment. I get the impression that you and the person you're asking about have had some conflicts perhaps in the recent past. And um, it, it seems to me like the two of you right now may be misaligned somehow. I feel like there is some sort of disconnect between you and them at this moment in time. And um, it, it actually wouldn't surprise me, based on what I'm seeing here, if you and this person are actually not even really in contact with each other or you have limited contact right now. Um, I just get this feeling like things are kind of tense and things have pretty much ground to a halt between the two of you. I mean, we've got this Four of Cups here. This card is um, a very inactive energy. This is associated with boredom, apathy, disappointment, defeat. Um, it can also represent indecision. Um, but in general, this is just giving me, like I said, a, a very stagnant kind of energy. The Four of Swords is very similar as well. This is usually about rest and reflection, um, kind of like somebody withdrawing, going within in order to 
you know, think about something, evaluate a situation. Um, or this card can also represent pressing pause on a situation. And I really feel like that's kind of what has happened between you and this person. Like the, the connection um, has been put on pause. And I feel like what your person would like to have happen is um, basically they, they want to reconnect and, and they want to like rebuild this relationship. The Four of Coins, this is stability, this is order and groundedness. Um, similar energy to the centering card that I just talked about a couple minutes ago. Um, the Four of Coins, this is... Hmm. I'm, I'm seeing like people, you, you and your person working together with this card. I'm seeing like a desire for teamwork, a desire to work with one another um, in order to rebuild your relationship, in order to solidify it. And um, basically, I, I feel like this person just wants to be on solid ground with you again. Um, the Nine of Swords. This card relates to stress, anxiety. It can represent overthinking things, being really stuck in your head about something. Um, in the reverse, this usually signifies like overcoming stress, overcoming anxiety, um, you know, getting out of your head. Uh, and so in this context, this is basically telling me, first of all, that your person seems to be pretty upset, kind of stressed about what's going on between the two of you right now. Um, I get the sense that they are not really happy with the lack of communication that's going on. And um, it, it does seem to have them worried, you know? Um, <clears throat> so with that Nine of Swords showing up in the reverse position here, basically they're they're wanting an end to the stress they're wanting an end to the uncertainty and um the justice card this is about balance this is fairness this is wrongs being made right i get the impression that uh they may be wanting to make you some sort of an apology um depending on you know what what has occurred between the two of you um they'd like to make it up to you somehow like whatever happened it's like they want to make it right they want an opportunity to make amends um because they feel like you deserve that they feel like you deserve an apology like you deserve better than what they have given you in the past this um emperor card is kind of interesting Typically, this is authority, control. Um, it, it does relate to stability as well. This is number four in the major arcana. Um, fours just generally have that association. Um, in the reverse, this can indicate a loss of control, a lack of authority, um, spontaneity. You know, this card showing up here as something that your person wants is interesting because it it's it's not telling me that they want let's see how do i want to say this it's not that they don't want any structure in this relationship it's not that they don't want stability because they clearly do um it's it's like they they want to they want things to get back on track it's like they want to they want to be able to steer this connection into the direction that they want for it to go because right now they have no control over the situation they are like i mentioned already feeling stressed feeling uncertain about the future of this connection and that is problematic for them um they're very, they're they're very worried about you know what's to come if if there's anything to come i think they are um concerned that the two of you may not reconnect or you may not be able to reconcile work things out um but they would very much like that and this emperor card being here in the reverse is telling me that basically right now they have no control they have no basically no means of um 
influencing this relationship, or at least that's how they, how they feel right now. Um, but they would like to have some control. They would like to be able to, like I said, steer this into the direction that they want. Um, the Queen of Swords here, this card is associated with communication, clarity, insight. This is pretty straightforward in this context. Um, it's basically saying to me that your person would like a open, honest conversation to happen between the two of you. Um, like I mentioned already, I get the impression that a lot of you probably have little to no contact with this person right now. So, um, they're, they're wanting basically just an opportunity to have a very straightforward, frank conversation about the future of this connection. So, um, they want contact, they want communication, they want to rebuild and, and rebalance this connection. Um, but beyond that, let's see if we can't find out anything else about the, what this person wants from you. Okay, we have the death card coming out. So death is all about change, it's all about transformation. Endings and new beginnings, we have the Eight of Coins here. Let me get one more. Nine of Coins. Okay, so we got a lot of earthy energy showing up in this spread. Um, death, like I said, this is change, transformation. This talks about cycles. Um, in some cases, you know, this card can indicate the ending of a relationship. However, whenever there's an ending, there's inevitably a new beginning to take its place. So, um, honestly, I, I kind of feel like from your person's perspective, they're feeling like things have already come to an end. And, and maybe that's how you're seeing this as well. Like maybe things actually have ended technically between the two of you. Maybe that's why you're not in contact with each other. Um, but they're wanting, like I said, a, a reconnection. They're wanting a fresh start here. The eight of coins and the nine of coins are actually quite similar um, to each other. These cards both talk about stability, of course. It's, it's that grounded earth energy. Um, these cards in the relationship context. Um, first of all, the Eight of Coins is about hard work. It's about putting forth the effort to achieve a particular goal. You know, this is um, this is kind of a continuance of the Four of Coins energy. Um, it's again talking to me about coming together and working together and rebuilding this relationship. Um, the Nine of Coins, somewhat similar. This card often indicates like self-sufficiency, independence. Um, there's also an association here with wish fulfillment. And so in this context, I'm, okay, hang on. I, I feel like I want to pull like one clarifier for this because I feel like I know what this card is saying, but I want to make sure. That's too many cards. One card, please. Why is the nine of coins here? Queen of coins. More coins. More earth energy. Okay. So, um... I... Okay. I, I am getting the sense that this relationship may have been somewhat um, codependent in the past, kind of imbalanced, somewhat dysfunctional perhaps. And I feel like you probably are already aware of that and that could be why this relationship as of right now is no more. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like things I feel like this relationship was just kind of unhealthy. It, it wasn't, um, it just wasn't functional. It wasn't something that you guys could have possibly kept up for very long. 
Do you know what I'm saying? Or at least it wasn't something that could have continued for very long um, as it was. You know, maybe in the distant past, this was um, more balanced and, and, and more, um, more of a functional relationship, but then maybe something happened where it became uh, kind of codependent. You know, whatever the case, I'm just getting that feeling of codependency because the Nine of Coins and the Queen of Coins here are telling me that your person, while they do want to reconnect with you and they do want an opportunity at reconciliation, I'm also getting that they they want to, um, let's see, how do I want to say this? They want to maintain their individual identity and they want for you to maintain yours. Um, it's possible that when you were together um, or when you were involved with each other, it didn't necessarily have to be like a committed relationship that you were in with this person. Just, you know, take it how it applies to you. But I get the sense that when you were involved with each other, the relationship may have become kind of consuming for, for both of you. And maybe more for one person than the other, but I do feel like both of you were engaging in some codependent behaviors, patterns, um, and, and it became, it's like, it's like you guys lost sight of yourselves. Like, this is how your person is seeing it. Your person is looking back, reflecting on the relationship, and this is what they're seeing. This is how they're interpreting what happened um, between the two of you in the past. They feel like you both lost sight of them yourselves, or they lost sight of themselves. And they don't want for that to happen again. They want, they, they want to come back together, but they don't want to repeat what happened before. They want this to be, yeah, they, they want for both of you to maintain your identities as individuals and, you know, not, not allow the relationship to become so consuming or to, you know, um, to necessarily become like the focal point of your lives. Relationships are important, obviously, especially um, our relationships with, you know, romantic partners and life partners, etc. But there are also other aspects of our lives that are important, too. And, you know, we have to find a balance between all of those things, all of those facets of ourselves, you know what I'm saying? And um, I feel like in the past, from your person's perspective, that balance was not maintained. It was like they're seeing this as the relationship became too big of a focus and it, it took away from other things. Like, I get the sense that somebody maybe stopped spending as much time with friends or family. I get the sense that somebody was thinking about this connection, like, pretty much constantly. Like, somebody maybe even, you know, stopped doing their hobbies or became kind of lax with, you know, work or schoolwork or whatever because this connection just became the most important thing. And I'm not saying that this was you necessarily. It could have been them, or it could have been both of you to some extent. Um, but that's what I am getting here. So your person is wanting a reconciliation, but they don't want for things to be codependent. They don't want for this to be a dysfunctional relationship again. We have the tower. Yeah, it's kind of like... Um, they want to start fresh, like completely fresh. The tower is usually about, you know, very significant kind of life-changing events. It's, it's like everything comes crumbling down and you're forced to pick up the pieces. And so in this case, this is showing me that your person wants to basically clear away everything about 
your relationship as it was previously. They want to clear out all of the old, all of the old energy that you guys shared. Um, they, they don't want to bring back the same habits, the same tendencies, the same patterns that existed within your relationship before, okay? They want to rebuild this, like, literally from the ground up. That is too many cards. <clears throat> Okay, well, they're both facing up, so I guess I'll take them. Okay, we have the King of Coins here. King of Coins, very similar to the Queen of Coins. Both of these cards are about abundance and prosperity and success. You know, material success, but they can also represent success in um, other areas of life as well. Uh, feelings of fulfillment and contentment and satisfaction um, come to mind with these cards. And the Knight of Cups is also showing up here. So the Knight of Cups usually represents love offers, expressions of love, or, you know, somebody opening up about their emotions about someone or something. Um, knights in general, very action-oriented cards. They represent movement. They represent messages coming through, offers being made. And, um, the Knight of Cups in general is is a very romantic, loving kind of energy. Um, your person would like to come towards you. I feel like they would like to make you an offer. And I think, ideally, at some point they would like to get to this stage. The King and Queen of Coins, these cards are counterparts. And counterparts tend to represent um, a couple or two people who are going to become a couple. Um, the gender is irrelevant, like, don't get caught up on that. Um, but it's just, I, I'm saying with these two cards that ideally your person would like to eventually become like your counterpart. Like, like I feel... I feel like they have ambitions to be your life partner someday, but I, I feel that they're trying not to attach to that outcome too much because they're not sure how feasible it actually is going to be, you know. Um, the Knight of Cups is, is a little bit more representative of their um, actual state of mind, like, this is representing an offer being made, an opportunity coming forward. Um, the knights usually do not represent, like, real solid relationships or, like, real long-term commitments. Um, so the Knight of Cups is telling me they would like to make you an offer, but they, um, they're going to just kind of take things as they come. They're going to just kind of see how things feel, see th how things progress. And like I said, I ideally, I think this person wants to have like a long-term commitment with you, but they're just not completely sure if that's going to be doable. They're, I, I think they're still afraid that they may... Um, the two of you may fall back into, you know, your old habits, your old patterns from before. And so, like I said, they're, they're trying not to become too attached to this desired outcome. They're trying to just keep an open mind and, you know, see where things go, see what happens. Does that make sense? Um, so group number one, I think I'm going to wrap it up here. That's what I'm getting for what your person wants to have happen between the two of you, what they want for your connection. Um, I hope that this resonated with you. I hope that this was 
at least interesting, perhaps. Um, you know, this is just a general reading, so take what applies to you, leave the rest behind. If something doesn't fit, don't try to make it fit. Remember, I do have personal readings available if you're interested. The link will be below. And um, thank you for joining me today. I hope I see you next time, guys. Bye! Okay, group two, I have the Wild Unknown Tarot for you guys today. We're going to find out what your person of interest wants to have happen. What do they want for your connection? Where do they want for things to go next? So, let's get some cards here for you. What does group two's person want for their connection? We have the Hermit reversed, first of all. We have the Six of Pentacles. I'm going to take that upright. It came out kind of sideways. Um, let's see what else. The Emperor. Page of Pentacles reversed. Six of Swords, Justice Reversed. Hmm. Group One also got the Emperor and Justice. Let me get one more for right now. Oh, okay. Death and... Cool. Okay. On the bottom of the deck is the lover's card. Um, I just happened to see that just now and uh, wanted to point it out because the lovers is union, it's partnership, it's unconditional love. Um, it also represents decisions. Um, okay, so these cards here Right in the center of your spread here is the Six of Swords. So the Six of Swords is about conflict resolution. This card is about people coming together, working through problems, moving forward together. Um, in that respect, it often signifies reconciliation in the relationship context. And um, with that showing up here, right in the center of your spread, and also with the Death and the Fool cards being here as well. Um, there's a lot of energy here that suggests to me a desire for a fresh start, a new beginning. The Death card is about transformation, endings, and new beginnings. The Fool card, this is... Um, this is the first card of the Major Arcana, so this is like embarking on a brand new adventure. This is, you know, something completely new. Starting over, starting from scratch. Okay. The Hermit, this card um, in the reverse position is kind of interesting because usually this is about withdrawal, it's about isolation and introspection, it's a very solitary energy. Um, in the reverse position, this card can indicate one of two things. Sometimes it can be that solitary energy like magnified times 10, or it can represent someone coming out of a state of isolation, someone coming back towards other people, um, re-entering society, so to speak. And obviously those are two very different interpretations, and um, it all depends on what other cards are present, you know, um, figuring out which which of those meanings is applicable in, um, in a reading. 
And in this case, I get the sense that this is talking more about the coming forward, the coming out, um, the release of the solitary energy and reconnecting, reconnecting with other people, reconnecting with a specific person in this case being, um, I feel that person being you. And um, the Six of Pentacles is here as well as Justice Reversed. So this is also interesting because the Six of Pentacles is about balance, it's about um, fairness, generosity, and uh, Justice is very similar. It also speaks of balance, it talks about fairness, um, reciprocation. It is reversed, however, which um, a lot of times signifies that there is some kind of imbalance in a situation. There's some sort of injustice going on, um, you know, wrongs have been left, you know, unaddressed. There have been issues that have not been rectified. Um, and I feel like in the past, first of all, I, I get the impression that right now your relationship to this person seems to be kind of imbalanced or it was imbalanced in the past. I actually feel with the Hermit card being here and um, your Oracle card being Reflection that the two of you probably are at a bit of a distance from each other right now. You may even be in separation, um, which I hadn't intended for these readings to be specifically about separations um, or no contact situations, but group one also um, appeared to be in separation with their person as well. Um, but anyway, I get the sense that your relationship with this person in the past was kind of imbalanced. It was like one person was putting forth a lot more effort than the other person, and that was creating problems. It was causing the person who was trying to make the effort to feel unwanted, unappreciated, um, unloved even, and the person who was not putting forth nearly as much effort, the person who was just taking, um, I feel like since since you've been separated from this individual, they've been thinking a lot about your connection and how they handled things and how they navigated your relationship. They've been doing a lot of reflection on it, and I do get the sense that they regret how they went about things. I feel that your person in the past just did not have the dedication. They did not have the commitment to the connection. Um, it, it was like they were distracted by something else or other things, multiple. And, um, and, and they just weren't investing in the connection. They weren't doing the work. They were leaving you to do, like, everything. They were leaving you. I feel like... You, the viewer, probably, um, I feel like you guys probably were, like, keeping the relationship going pretty much single-handedly for a period of time. Like, you kept trying. You kept trying to give this person another opportunity. You kept trying to, you know, initiate conversations, um... And, and, you know, trying to connect with this person, but they just, they just wouldn't give anything back. And I feel like, you know, like, like I said, they've, they've been reflecting a lot on that. And there is some guilt that I'm feeling about the fact that they gave you nothing but crumbs in the past. And, um... I feel like currently they're uh, they're more in this emperor sort of energy. This is um, this is order. This is stability. This is control and authority. Um, the emperor is someone who is really on top of things. The emperor is someone who is you know stern but fair. This to me, you know, it, it has an association with like the divine masculine energy. So you know, this person doesn't necessarily have to be a man. Um, but I get the sense that whoever they are, 
this could be like a soulmate situation actually um i usually don't like specify in these general readings too much about like soulmate things twin flame connections whatever um but i feel for you guys this this could be a soul connection and the person that you're thinking of could be like the divine masculine in your situation do you know what i'm saying um and the emperor card being here it's telling me that they are they're kind of coming into alignment with that part of themselves they're they're um getting in tune with their divine masculine nature like that energy that exists within them and um they're becoming more mature they're becoming more responsible and you know committed to the things that they the things that they want and you know their goals and it's like that's not how this person was in the past things were very imbalanced between the two of you but i feel like now they are in a position where they are much more capable of um, actually maintaining a relationship and like actually investing, being able to invest, willing and able to invest their time and energy into this as much as you did. Let me get a few more cards here, see what else wants to come up. Knight of Pentacles reversed. Okay, so this is interesting. We have the Hierophant, Seven of Swords. All right. Knight of Pentacles in the reversed. Um, the Knights in general are about movement. They're about communication, messages coming through, offers being made. In the reverse, um, the action that is associated with these cards tends to be blocked for some reason. So, um... <sighs> I am getting that your person, let's see, how do I want to say this? Theoretically, your person would like to reconcile with you. Your person would like an opportunity to start completely fresh and, you know, leave the past behind and actually put the work into this relationship, but they seem to be, um, they seem to still be kind of holding back as far as actually coming towards you. I mentioned with the Hermit card being reversed that you know, it can indicate you know, somebody coming forward, coming out of a state of withdrawal, or it can be withdraw times 10. And it's weird because I feel like both of those interpretations are applicable here. Like they are, this person wants to come towards you. They want to come out of their shell and contact you and reconnect with you and all of that. But they're also... they're also still in this very introspective, very solitary state. Like energetically, they're still reflecting a lot on your connection. And that Knight of Pentacles being reversed and also this Seven of Swords being here, these two cards tell me that they are still not quite ready yet to actually, actually take that action and come towards you. The Seven of Swords, a lot of times I see this as somebody trying to hide or sneak away from a situation, trying to avoid a confrontation. Um, the Hierophant is also showing up here, which is interesting because the, um, the Hierophant is about, usually it's associated with like tradition, convention, um, it can represent marriage, it has an association with 
order and stability. And um, the um, the hierophant, sorry, I almost said the emperor. They're kind of similar figures, but um, the hierophant is generally a very wise, very knowledgeable figure, and um, he's like a mentor, like a teacher. And then I've also just pulled this card, which is the Seven of Pentacles. This card is about long-term investments. It's about basically slow but steady progress towards a goal. You know, putting that work in to um, reach a particular goal. And, you know, ultimately uh, reaping the rewards of your hard work and your efforts. Um, it is a very slow moving energy, the Seven of Pentacles. It does imply a waiting period. Um, I get the sense that the Emperor card and the Hierophant are both representing like what this person is on the path to becoming, which is interesting. <laughs> um, because I feel like in the past, this person was like the opposite of the emperor, the opposite of the hierophant. And, um, you know, kind of immature, kind of childish, irresponsible, um, very out of touch with their emotions or, you know, just very guarded emotionally, emotionally unavailable. But they're on the path to becoming this, you know, much more authoritative, responsible, stable, knowledgeable, and wise person. And this is something that is ongoing, and this is something that I feel has been going on possibly for some time. Like, honestly, it, it wouldn't surprise me if you've been separated from this person for like a year or more. Which, you know, it's, um, maybe not, maybe, you know, I, I feel like most people who are going to watch this video probably have contact with their person of interest or they're with their person of interest and they're just curious about what's, you know, what their person wants. But I feel like for you guys, group two... This is something that has been on hold or, or something that has ended quite some time ago. So what's going on? Like, <laughs> have you just been thinking about this person? Maybe they've just been on your mind lately and you're just kind of wondering, like, you know, what what's this reading going to say? What are they up to? Are they still thinking about me? Um, so on. In which case, yes, they are still thinking about you. They are on the path to growth and evolution, and they're on the path to becoming a totally brand new person, really. And so that, I feel, is why they're still not ready yet to actually come towards you, even though they would like to, um, you know, ideally. They don't feel like they're prepared yet. They haven't made enough progress along their own personal journey. Um, to do that just yet. And the Seven of Pentacles here, it's, it, this card is just making me think that this is something that's going to be ongoing for some time. So it still could be quite a while before this person gets back in touch with you or tries to reconnect with you. And for some of you, I can hear you saying, well, good, because I don't really have a place in my life for them right now. <laughs> um, and if that's the case, you know, that's okay. Um, when this person does come back towards you, things might be very different. You know, you, you, you never know. Um, but I just feel like the universe is going to be putting this person back on your path. It's going to be a minute. It's going to be a minute, but it's going to happen eventually. Okay. So just heads up. I suppose. Um, group two, I think I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, so that was kind of an interesting little reading. And um, I hope that it resonated with you. I hope it was interesting, at least. And, you know, keep in mind that this is just a general reading, so it's not going to be 
totally applicable to every single person who um, sees it, you know, take what applies to you and leave the rest behind. If something doesn't fit, don't try to make it fit, um, you know, all that stuff. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining me today, guys. I really appreciate it. I am wishing y'all all the best and I hope I see you next time. Bye. All right, group number three. I have the good tarot here for you guys today. We are going to find out what your person wants for your connection, where they want things to go, what do they want to have happen between you. Um, your oracle card was faith. So let's see what other cards want to come out for you guys. We have nine of earth, eight of earth. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Five of earth, three of earth. What is happening? Five of water. Six of fire. Let me get one more for right now. Okay. <laughs> Guys, this is... This is something. This is definitely something. <laughs> one more card. Please. That is three cards. And I'm not going to take all of them. Can I just get one card, please? Okay. Eight of water. Hmm. Okay. So, um, give me a second, group three, to look at these cards. Um, right off the bat, a lot of earth energy. We have four earth cards, nine of earth, eight of earth, five of earth, and three of earth. Um, we also have some cards that are typically not great cards to get for, I mean, really any kind of reading. We have the five of earth here, which is typically um, associated with loss, grief, loneliness, abandonment. Um, it can represent poor health as well. Um, the five of water, this is similar in the sense that it also tends to indicate sadness and grief. Um, this card also tends to have kind of a pessimistic sort of energy. Um, like, for example, it can, it can represent somebody um, being very fixated on the negatives in a situation and unable to see the positives. And also, the eight of water. Usually this is about walking away from something, leaving something behind. And uh, you may not necessarily want to, but it may feel like a necessity. You might feel like you have to do it for, you know, your benefit or, you know, for the, for the greater good of everyone involved, whatever the case may be. Um, so three cards here that are not super positive. Um, we also have here the Nine of Earth. This is associated with independence, self-sufficiency, um, stability as well. It relates to wish fulfillment. So like a lot of times, um, you know, if there's something that you're hoping for, something you're trying to manifest, getting this card would be a pretty good sign that that desire is going to be fulfilled. And there's also just this real strong connection to prosperity and abundance with the Nine of Earth. Um, so that's quite a positive card. So is the Eight of Earth. This is about hard work, putting forth the effort to achieve a goal. Um, it's, you know, stability, security. The um, Three of Earth, similar. This card often represents uh, teamwork, people coming together to build something up. Um, a lot of times in the relationship context, the Three of uh, Earth represents like Two people who maybe have some kind of history together, like working with one another to rebuild or renovate their relationship, or in some cases, you know, just building upon what already exists. Um, and the Six of Fire, this is a really positive card as well. This is victory. This is success. This is forward movement and recognition. 
Um, so we have a number of really good cards here, but we also have some not so great cards here. And um, before I really get into this, I think I'm actually going to go ahead and pull a few more and see what else wants to come out for you guys. High Priestess and the uh, Wheel of Fortune. I can't read, apparently. Um, okay, so this looks like something that maybe is not going real well. Like, this is a relationship that may not be going super well. Um, I get the impression, you know, with the five of earth and the five of water and the eight of water that there has probably been some kind of conflict or issue, you know, between the two of you. And I feel that it's possible that someone has pulled away from the other person. And it seems like that wasn't necessarily, um, wanted, but... Somebody feels like they don't really have a choice. I, I feel that there's a lot of love in this connection. Like, there's a lot of love between you and this person that you're thinking about. And you have a very strong attachment to one another. You have a very strong connection. And this seems like something that both of you, like almost desperately want to have like like you and this person it feels like you guys want to be together so badly you want to be together so badly but there's something that's something that's blocking that and i'm getting for some of you that this could be like a long distance thing and so the issue could simply be physical distance um travel might be an issue at this point in time and that could be what is preventing you from being together that could be what's preventing this connection from moving forward because I really feel like that's what this person wants this person wants this connection to move forward they want to come together with you and break out of this like rut that they feel like your relationship is stuck in okay they want to move forward. They want to enter into a new phase, a new cycle, a new chapter for this relationship. And um, I just, I keep getting this, all, all this very loving and gentle and compassionate energy. This person has a huge, huge, huge soft spot for you. Like, it feels like they might be the kind of person who isn't real, you know, it isn't real expressive about their feelings, you know, certainly not somebody who's like real touchy feely, you know, mushy and all of that kind of stuff. But I feel like deep down, well, really not that deep down. It's, it's like right below the surface. This person has so much love for you. And it's like, it's like, that's, that's almost all that I can feel. Um, so Okay, I, ju I just wanted to, to say that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I get the sense that this person really, really badly wants to be with you. They, they want to move this relationship forward. This person wants commitment. This person wants to build a life with you. This person wants to create a prosperous, abundant life with you. But there is something that is blocking your path forward. And like I said, it could just be physical distance if this is a long distance connection. Um, there could be something related to money as well. And for some of you, I feel like there may be other people who are playing some kind of role in this situation who are maybe somehow preventing you guys from being together or preventing you from taking things further, you know? I, I feel like 
most of you probably already are technically with this person. Like I feel that the majority of you who chose this group are like exclusive with this person. Um, but they want more. They want way more. And um, let's see what if there's any uh, other cards that want to come up here. They want to do the work. They want to do the work. We have the Queen of Fire. This is all about manifestation and wish fulfillment. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The Fool as well as the Moon. Okay. So the Queen of Fire, like I was just saying, this is manifestation, wish fulfillment. Um, this is making dreams into reality. This person has so much passion and enthusiasm for this connection. They are so hopeful about this connection. I mean, the Fool shows me that as well. This is optimism. This is hope for the future. This is new beginnings as well. This is like embarking on a brand new adventure. Um, your person seems to feel like your connection right now is kind of stuck. Like there is... Um, it's interesting because we have the moon and the high priestess showing up here. Both of these cards are kind of mysterious and um, they, they have associations with like things being hidden, the unknown. And your person kind of feels like they're just lost in the dark. Like they aren't totally sure how they're going to move things forward. They're not totally sure how the two of you are going to take this to the next level. They're not sure, you know, how they're going to bridge the gap that exists between the two of you. They just know that they want to. And I feel like this person is willing to do pretty much whatever it takes to bridge that gap. Because this person seems to feel like you are their future. Like, they've decided that this relationship is what they want. This is what they want to invest in. This is what they want to, you know, nurture. You're the person they want to love. And I think they are hoping that you have as much trust, faith in them as they have in you. Your person wants for you to have faith in this relationship. Your person believes in this relationship so much and they want for you to believe in it too. Queen of Earth. The Empress. Ooh. That is a few too many cards. Okay. Four of Water. The Queen of Earth and the Empress. Um, these two cards are quite similar. These two cards both talk to me about... Well, honestly, the first thing that comes to mind here is fertility, which is interesting. Um, both of these are very maternal figures. Um, so both of these cards can, you know, represent pregnancy, children, um, etc. But the Queen of Earth and the Empress, again, this is energy of prosperity. This is abundance. And both of these energies are very gentle and loving. And this person, this person sees you as life partner material. You are the person that they want to, you know, travel along this journey of life with. Okay. The four of water here is kind of emphasizing to me that they want all of these things, but right now they're not totally sure how they're going to achieve it. 
they're not sure how it's all actually going to manifest. And you might be in a very similar boat here. Um, maybe you're just wondering, like, if this person feels the same. Maybe you're wondering if there's truly hope for this relationship. Um, the Four of Water can represent feeling stuck, okay? Feeling stuck, feeling like you don't know how to move forward in a situation. And I feel like that's exactly what this person is dealing with. It's It's like... They want this so much, but they don't know how to actually manifest it, how to actually make it happen. Because it's it seems like they need, they feel like they need resources that they just don't have at the moment. For a lot of you, like I said, I feel like this is related to actual physical distance and or money. Like, your, your person wants to start building your life together. But there are, like, financial constraints. Um, like, maybe it's, it's just not feasible for you guys to, like, move in together right now. Or for them to move closer to you. Or, you know, something along those lines. It's just, it's coming through so clearly to me that this person has so much love for you and they want this to work. They want this to work. They want this to be a lifetime partnership. I feel like for a lot of you, this person wants to have a family eventually. They want to be living with you. They want to have, they want to have it all. They want to be your partner in life. They want to be there to support you and to cheer you on and to take care of you when you need taking care of. This is literally like, you know, in sickness and in health for richer or poorer, like this is someone who is willing to make those vows and keep them which is kind of intense. Um, some of you might be a little bit surprised uh, by just the extent of how how much this person wants this. Um, because like I mentioned at the start of this reading, I feel like for a lot of you, this may be someone who isn't super expressive of their feelings. They may have somewhat of a rough exterior, but underneath that, this person is like jelly. This person is so soft and so loving and, and kind. I feel like this person has a really good heart. And, um, yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to wrap it up here because I, I feel like I'm just kind of starting to repeat myself at this point. But um, that's what I'm getting for you guys, group three. I hope that this resonated with you. I hope that this was helpful. Um, unfortunately, you know, it, it looks like your person still doesn't really have a solid plan of action, but this is what they want, okay? So, thank you guys for joining me. Um, this is just a general reading, so just take what applies to you and leave the rest behind. If something doesn't fit, don't try to make it fit. Uh, just a reminder, I am doing personal readings uh, now through June 7th, 2020, they are 20% off. So if you're interested, you can go to my website or Etsy store. And um, yeah, I think that's going to do it for today, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that I see you next time. Bye.